hello hello so today's collective has to do with the sun because it's sunday <laughs> so i don't know why i'm feeling like a very egyptian vibe and so for today's oracle we're actually going to be using the isis oracle and we're going to be using the egyptian tarot to clarify i kind of hate that i don't have an egyptian tarot but we're going to be using the tarot illuminati just because it's so vivid very golden energy so we're going to be using that so let's go ahead and start we're going to start with the message from the oracle um i know usually we do that until part three but let's let's start so that people who watch part one can still get the benefit of the main message by the way guys i've been getting <laughs> i've been getting a lot of messages from people who seem to think that i know their story so well i must know them or i must know somebody in their life telling them these things that's flattering in the sense that they resonate so strongly with the story that they think i'm talking about them it's not flattering because um i keep getting Sorry, I had to turn out the candle. <laughs> I keep getting people thinking I am somebody I'm not. I have already shared my personal profile on here. Uh, you guys have seen my face. I don't know you. I really don't. Um, I'm starting to get to know people who are consistent followers, but it's like a relationship that's building. It's not me creating stories out of knowing your personal story. So I'm so happy you guys resonate with the videos to that degree, but I promise you I am not telling your story. I'm pulling a story in from the ethers and channeling it. So if that's your story that's being told, there's a reason it's being told, but I don't know you personally, okay? All right, let's start. What is today's collective about? What is today's collective about? Okay, we got two, but these are really long, so I'm going to only take one. Divine Destiny, Path of the Divine Warrior. Okay. So, let's get the little book that comes with this. And let's read the message. All right. So, it says, Spiritual Work of the Higher Initiate. The Oracle of Divine Destiny is a call to your divine warrior. This part of you has great self-esteem and believes that what you desire is worth, worth whatever effort, personal growth, application, focus, and attention are required to obtain it, provided it aligns with your divine des destiny. This part of you acts in personal integrity, and if the goal will compromise integrity, then the goal is refined until it shines like a diamond in your heart. Then the divine warrior will bring it into being. The path of the divine warrior is not one of any means to an end. That mean, The means and the end are considered equally important. The divine warrior will succeed in bringing about your divine destiny, but it will be done in a way that is in integrity with deep spiritual values. There are important teachings on the path of the feminine about the need for surrender and allowing for the best manifestation. The divine warrior is not at odds with these, but continually surrenders into the greater unfoldment and play of cosmic forces seeking to align with those forces for greater power and flow. The Oracle of Divine Destiny often comes at a time when there is something that you feel you are struggling to attain. It may be a vague sense or a clear vision. There is something within your heart that you have almost given up hope on, wondering if it is ever really going to come together. This Oracle comes with the message that although you may feel struggle or challenge, it is not a sign to step away in this situation. It is a sign to put your faith in the divine warrior within instead. This warrior may shift approach, change expectation, go within to find the resources you require, or find a completely different path to get you to your destiny. Do not give up the fight. If you're not sure to what this applies, ask yourself what it is in your life that you feel you're fighting to attain or maintain. Find what it is, not in form, but in essence. If it is from your job that you are fighting for, then maybe may then it may be your freedom and responsibility that you're really fighting for as an example if you're fighting for your weight or eating habits then it might be the right to express your true feelings that you're fighting for with your body as the divine warrior refusing to give up the right to truthful expression 
Find the truth of what you're working towards and keep your heart and mind centered in that truth. Your divine warrior will get you what you need and deeply desire in alignment with your best and highest divine destiny. You deserve no less. Okay, so I cannot, it's like I keep getting pulled to the one that I put away, so I'm going to pull it. This is the other one that had fallen out. I put it at the back of the deck. Divine Sun Child, Blessings of the Sun Falcon. Okay, hold on. Let me find that one. Divine Sun Child. Well, ain't that perfect because today is the day of the sun. <laughs> All right. Divine Sun Child. I'm glad I didn't ignore it. Horus, the divine sun child of Isis and Osiris, is born out of impossible circumstances. Through the great devotion of his mother, Isis, and her loving determination to heal, to heal her husband and bring him back to life, to eventually become king of Egypt, defeating dark forces that would seek to destroy him and all that he loved with great triumph. It is the story of the divine hero of Egypt. It is also a metaphor for our inner world. Our divine feminine must stay true to her values of love, healing, and the triumph of creativity over destruction, born of fear and hate. She must never give up her belief in her ideals. <clears throat> our divine feminine is our body, whether man or woman, our inner values and the ideals that make our hearts beat faster and feel right within our belly. With such love for her inner divine masculine, she never gives up on her belief in him either and in her desire for their togetherness. It leads to his healing, even if he has been lost, fragmented, and thought dead. The divine masculine is our spirit, whether woman or man, that our body desires to unite with, to help it come to life and light in a new and blissful way. The love in our hearts calls our spirit home into our bodies. We become able to stand firm, take action, and make choices that allow our inner ideals to become part of our world. We live according to our values, not just hold them inside of ourselves. Finally, as our divine feminine and masculine unite within our bodies, a new golden consciousness is born. This is the sun child Horus, with an eye that is the moon and an eye that is the sun, representing the perfect balance of masculine and feminine in harmony with each other. The divine sun child is the new self, filled with love, light, and power in the world. It is the authentic self, living the inner truths in the outer world, an agent of healing on this planet, an inspiration for others to be bold, brave, and vivid enough to walk their own path to eventually receive these same blessings. As the sun falcon, with a burning golden solar disk above his head, he descends to you now, blessing you with great light, good tidings, and creative potency to manifest your life's legacy, that which has meaning and preciousness to your heart and soul successfully. He is the sign that your heart needs to know it will triumph. The solar principle for which he stands honors creativity and light <clears throat> in all forms, music, art, writing, and more. What is in your heart? Are you building a spiritual legacy in your life now? Even if from seemingly small or impossible beginnings, great things are possible for you and your creative spirit. To allow these sacred blessings to empower your creative birth now, in many ways, you are guided to let go of thoughts or feelings that is impossible or too hard or cannot be done. Honoring the need to create as part of your natural life expression is a way for you to receive these blessings. You are born to shine like the sun. You just are, and there's no question that it will happen. The Oracle of the Sun Falcon can also indicate a new and life-changing opportunity on its way to you. When your heart sings, say yes. Do not give up until you have your success. The sun will shine on you. You will succeed. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> I'm so glad I did not pass up that card. It literally has the sun on it. So divinity is definitely at play here we have divine destiny divine sun child but here's what's really interesting these are definitely connected because this is the path to the blessings is what it feels like um i want to talk about this a little bit more because this one was very focused on integrity and this one was very focused on integration leading to the final results right so integrity in the sense that it said it mentioned that just because you're trying to reach a goal, it doesn't mean that, you know, the means, um, what was it? <sighs> There's an expression. I totally forgot what it was. <clears throat> People use it all the time. Of any means to reach to an end, right? Any means to an end means that it doesn't matter how it gets done. The results are what matters. No, this is like, no, no, actually how it gets done does matter. So to, to put an example, let's say that 
one of the reasons I have such an issue with religion, right, is because most religions out there do believe in any means to an end. So, for example, Christianity, um, even any other religion have used violence, have used a lot of different things because they think, well, the result is we're saving these people. How does it matter, right? It does though. And this is a big path to that. There's a big um, bow to that, uh, nod to that in the sense that imagine somebody saying, well, I need money to build a church. So it doesn't matter if it comes from a murderous drug lord as long as I get the money to build a church, that's what matters. No, no, no. This is, you have to be very careful that the path you're following to reach a certain destiny is just as full of integrity as the result. And then this one is very much talking about for us to reach that result, we also have to make sure that we're honoring both the feminine side of ourselves as well as the masculine side of ourselves. Which means that if you're the type of woman <clears throat> that goes around talking shit about men all the time. Men are trash, men are liars, men are cheaters, men are this, men are that. You've got some healing to do, sister. <clears throat> and if you're the type of man that goes around talking shit about the feminine, women are manipulative and users and this and that, and their feminine energy is weak, then you've got some healing to do. Because this is about integrating both masculine and feminine. And that's how you reach true uh, true unity, true enlightenment. So this is going to be interesting. <clears throat> well, I'm trying to keep them. Let's keep these there. Now let's go ahead and start with today's collective. This is already interesting. Let's see what it brings. <clears throat> so let's start today's collective. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> You know what? We're putting these back. There's a lot. It's like eight in a row. Or should we keep them? I don't know. It feels like a lot. That's one, two, three. Yeah, that's eight cards in a row. You know what? Who am I to question? <laughs> Who am I to question? Let's take them. Okay. So I love that this is the first card that came out because when I was looking at the deck, I was going through the cards and this is like super Leo energy. It has some green in there, but look at those sunflowers. This is Queen of Wands, which is very Leo. And Leo is the ruler of the sun. I mean, the sun rules the sign of Leo. So let's start. We have Queen of Wands energy, somebody who is embodying confidence, embodying um, being very sure of themselves, knowing what they want, who they are. Their sense of identity is just on lockdown. Okay. Okay. Let's put these in the center. Seven of Wands. Now, this queen may have to defend herself from accusations. Because um, see, here's the thing. We've got six wands down here, right? So six wands is when somebody reaches success. They reach fame. They reach, um, they're getting accolades. People are praising them. But here, it shows somebody having to stand their ground. But here's here's what's interesting, Okay. Standing their ground means that they know they're shown having the high ground, which means they know that they're right. But if you notice, you can't even see the people that are trying to prod, poke at this person. So to me, this kind of feels like, I mean, if you're going to defend yourself, yes, you have a high ground. But do you need to? Do these people matter? Shouldn't this person just step away and use the energy for something, I don't know, wiser? And then we had the Eight of Swords. Freeing, this is a feminine energy, but she shows up in reverse, which means that she's freeing herself from some mental blockages, um, things that used to hold her back. She's being freed from. Prince of Swords. Now, I think that this is still the feminine we're talking about. So Prince of Swords energy is about research, right? Investigating what it is that got you here and how you can free yourself from this. Nine of Pentacles in reverse. Hmm. So Nine of Pentacles upright is feminine energy that is independent financially, 
Um, this is somebody who is unmarried, but this is somebody who doesn't need to get married to be successful or to be, you know, um, victorious. But in reverse, so this is somebody who's stepping into her confidence. And I feel like stepping into her confidence because this one came right after. Somebody who's truly confident doesn't need to be defending themselves. But if she's still defending herself, it means that she barely stepped into it. So she's getting new to the confidence thing. And the moon card. So maybe she's trying to reach financial independence, but she's a little unsure how. <clears throat> Ten of swords in reverse. <sighs> she might have gone through some betrayal, some hurt, and she's trying to figure out a way to release that... That... Um, that feeling of a terrible betrayal. Yeah, six of swords. She's trying to move on from that. Okay. But <clears throat> the overall energy is the ace of swords in reverse, which says that although she is working on this, there's something she's either not being honest about with herself or she, there's something she's not telling everyone else. So let's see. <clears throat> Let's start by clarifying that Queen of Wands. Clarify the Queen of Wands. We've got the Emperor in reverse. Clarify Seven of Wands. Eight of Cups upright. Clarify Eight of Swords in reverse. <clears throat> Five of Pentacles in reverse. Clarify Prince of Swords. Ten of Wands in reverse. Clarify Nine of Pentacles in reverse. Six of Swords in reverse, Queen of Pentacles in reverse. I mean, Six of Swords upright, Queen of Pentacles in reverse. Clarify the Moon card upright. Four of Pentacles in reverse. Clarify Ten of Swords in reverse. Justice card in reverse. Clarify Six of Swords upright. Page of Cups, Knight of Swords upright. Okay. Oh, overall energy, Knight of Wands. Ooh, this feels a little, the energy feels a little connected to yesterday. And I'm going to tell you why. If you have not watched yesterday's reading, please do. Um, because Knight of Wands in reverse makes me think of somebody who's impulsive. They act quickly. But they're not really thinking things through. So which means Ace of Swords in reverse, she's still, she's lacking clarity. So it's not about her being deceitful or not honest. She's just not clear about what she's supposed to do. So why? She is showing up in confidence, but with the emperor in reverse. And this card is coming to mind, which tells me that she's working on integrating the masculine energy in her life. So what does the masculine energy represent? The masculine energy represents strength, um, represents per, like going after things, represents structure, represents boundaries. It represents the ability to say no, the ability to say I don't want that, all of that. All of that is masculine energy. So this is a queen who's stepping into her confidence and she's embracing masculinity. But she's still not super clear on how to do that. She's still struggling because the emperor is showing up in reverse. So she's she's not fully there yet. But remember what I said. <laughs> it's so interesting because usually Seven of Wands is like, defend yourself. But I knew it. I felt this energy. Like if you're really confident after the Queen of Wands, why would you need to defend yourself? And here we go. Eight of Cups. She needs to realize that there's like a, there's like a type of quiet how to put this quiet assuredness okay so let me put it to you this way and the emperor energy is present with her right so if you're looking at somebody dressed in this regal outfit sitting in this throne looking looking this um regal looking this amazing right Oh my God, I got a fly in the room and it's getting on my damn nerves. Go away. 
sorry. Um, would you sit there thinking that this is somebody who should stand up and start beating people like this? Wouldn't that kind of, I don't know, take away from her dignity? Wouldn't that make her look childish? It would. So sitting in your power means you don't have to squabble with peasants because the people holding the, the six wands, that's why you can't even see them because they're not important. Peasants are always going to complain about somebody who is like, let me put it this way. Every CEO in any company, whether they're running things with integrity or not, is going to have people up their ass. Because there's people who don't know how to take authority, who don't know how to step into authority, but they resent others who do. They don't like other people having authority. And in this case, she has to, this is like somebody who's struggling because she wants to be liked. Which means she's stepping into her confidence, but she's still struggling. Because somebody who's over here too focused on whether people like them or not will not be able to be an emperor. They won't be able to integrate the masculine energy. Because the masculine energy of the emperor, he doesn't give a fuck if people like him or not. He's the emperor. Of course, some people don't like him. <laughs> in fact, throughout history, most emperors die an early death because people always want to take their power. In this case, it's symbolic. It's not actual political energy. So nobody's trying to kill her, but it's more like she has to stop worrying about whether people like her or not. She has to abandon this mentality of like, no, 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 let me explain myself. Let me tell you who I really am. Don't look at me like that. Let me tell you who... No, no, no. That is not regal energy. Because it's the equivalent, and I've used this example before, I think, on collectives or with my clients. But I want you to think of it like this. Imagine somebody in this energy, right, being led down a procession down the street. And she's being carried on the shoulders of, of servants, let's say. And a peasant tries to throw rocks at her. First of all, it's probably never going to reach her because she's so well protected, right? But imagine if she stopped for every peasant that said something nasty or horrible and she got off her, her, um, I forget what they're called, <laughs> the little things where they would carry royalty. But imagine if she got off and, and started arguing with every peasant that didn't like her and she's trying to defend herself. Doesn't that weaken her position instead of enhancing it? A true, a person of true uh, power doesn't need to go around defending themselves to people. They only defend themselves to people who matter. If somebody like a CEO will only defend themselves, if there's like a committee that's about to examine a project, they're like, okay, let me explain. That's it. Because that those people have the power to remove them from their position. Those are the only people that deserve an explanation of what's going on. Anybody else? No. The shareholders, they deserve an explanation. Things like that. But apart from that, nobody matters. Five of Pentacles, Eight of Swords in reverse. So she's having to let go of limiting beliefs, right? So Five of Pentacles is in reverse, which is paired with this. So she is stepping out of the mentality of not being good enough. She is stepping into her power. But again, I feel like it's very new because she's still struggling. She's still a little... Mm, not sure but she is releasing it she's releasing the fact that she doesn't feel good enough um this has been a mental blockage for her for a long time not feeling good enough not feeling smart enough not feeling beautiful enough all these things she's gonna have to let go now knight of swords with the ten of wands in reverse what's helping her release these burdens is the fact that she's starting to understand herself more. The Prince of Swords is somebody who does research, somebody who digs, looks for answers. So this is good because it feels like she's looking within herself. She's digging into her mind. Where do these thoughts come from? Who taught me that I'm not smart enough? Who told me I'm not pretty enough? Who told me? And what makes them the authority in my life? And little by little, ten wands are being released, right? That burden is being released. Now, Unfortunately, like I said, she's still struggling because if you notice, the cards are a mix of strength and no strength, power and no power. 
nine of pentacles in reverse. So she's stepping into her confidence, but she's still not in this place of feeling like, oh, I can do bad all by myself. I am a badass. I am confident. I am. She's still struggling with that a little bit, especially because maybe financially she hasn't reached some goals. Six of Swords came out upright in both situations, which is good. It means she is looking for solutions. She is moving forward. She's not letting mental blockages, which is the Five of Swords comes right before this one. She's not letting mental blockages or insecurity stop her, but she's finding solutions to them. However, Queen of Pentacles in reverse says she's still a little too worried about what people think about her. The Queen of Pentacles in reverse is a little... <sighs> I don't want to say shallow because in this case i don't think this queen is shallow so it's not about being shallow i think more than anything um she's just been taught to care a little too much about what people think about her and that's coming from the fact that the queen of pentacles i'm sorry about the dog guys the queen of pentacles upright is somebody who nurtures herself she gives to herself when she's in reverse it's telling us this queen is still focused on giving to others but it's it's giving to others because she doesn't want to look bad she's not actually giving to herself because she wants to take care of herself so that needs to be addressed because that's where she's struggling the more she gives to herself the more she blossoms moon card is upright but the four of pentacles is in reverse so again we're getting uh, contradictory energy here. Four of Pentacles is releasing. Moon energy has to do with our subconscious, our fears, our deepest, darkest fears. Um, so she's working on this, right? The the paranoia that maybe she's dealt with for a long time, the anything that blocked her intuition. With the Four of Pentacles in reverse, she's releasing that. She's letting it go. She's not holding on to that anymore. And we've got the Ten of Swords in reverse with the Justice card in reverse. So, unfortunately, with the Justice card in reverse, she probably had something really unfair happen to her. Um, something that she knew wasn't right was done to her. But Ten of Swords is in reverse, which means it's better for her to just let it go. Let the laws of karma sort people out instead of trying to defend yourself and make... Make others know that you were treated wrongly. You don't need to be... If you know that you were treated wrongly, you're going to trust that the universe will take care of it. You don't need to be doing it yourself. Taking things into your own hands is arrogance. It's in the. It's almost like saying, no, the universe isn't good enough. I've got this. Well, who are we to say that we can do things better than the universe? Slow down. Six of Swords Upright. So again, moving past obstacles, moving past mental blockages, challenges how well the knight of swords is here twice so the research right but here's the page of cups research into our inner child research into what brought us to this place <clears throat> how did we get to where we are now so this is good this is stepping out of that impulsive energy which she's struggling with because the clarity still isn't there but she's trying i i sense that she's trying she's she's working on it Let's go ahead and organize these a little bit better because they all fell out at once. Well, I guess eight is all we're going to be able to put in a row. <clears throat> all right. Cool, cool. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and try the next row. What else? Ooh. Three of Wands in reverse and Eight of Wands in reverse. Hmm. Oh, Six of Wands upright. So remember when I said the Seven of Wands comes after the Six. This is the Six of Wands. This is people celebrating somebody this person's riding on a horse while everybody else is standing by. And if you notice, this is the only person that has their face uncovered. Everyone else, it's almost like they stand out above a crowd, right? But they're so focused, this, this feminine is so focused on this 
on defending her place, which means she's not trusting that this is her place. Because when you trust that this is your place, you don't need to sit there defending it. You're just like, no, I know. I just know that no one will be able to take this from me. When you're defending it so fiercely, it's like there's fear that it might be taken from you. Now, we've got the three of wands in reverse. So the fact that she's so focused on this means that she's struggling to see, she's struggling to focus on the future because she's putting too much energy on defending this, this place of hers, which of course, if she's not careful, might lead to her downfall, right? Eight of Wands in reverse. Because she's so focused on this and defending her place, she's not progressing. She's not moving forward. When Eight of Wands upright says she's supposed to, she has a lot of support. She has divine support. She has so much support that she should be shooting forward like an arrow. That's how fast she should be going. But because she's unsure of herself, she's still holding back. And therefore, progress is delayed. Let's see. Clarify three of wands. We've got the seven of cups in reverse, four of wands upright, tower in reverse, seven of pentacles, ace of cups. Clarify eight of wands in reverse. Ace of Pentacles, upright, with the Eight of Cups. Wow. <sighs> so, what does this tell me? It tells me, with the Seven of Cups, that this queen was under the illusion That there was some relationship waiting for her. With the tower in reverse, it means that she's trying to delay the, the dissolving of this connection. Seven of Pentacles, which means that this is where she keeps putting energy. She keeps, like if she had to break up with somebody, she keeps trying to defend herself to this person on why she keeps trying to make this person understand her reasoning because she's still focused on the potential and three of wands in reverse she can't see her future without this person the ace of pentacles she's so focused on that new beginning that she's disregarding her own she's disregarding her future because maybe at some time at some point that person had her on a pedestal and that's the pedestal she's defending. That's the place that she doesn't want to lose. She wants that person to still care for her that way. She wants that person to still see her that way. And Eight of Cups, this is what she has to walk away from. Because somebody who's truly secure in themselves doesn't need to go around explaining themselves. Because they know. They know that if somebody's looking at them from a distorted light, it has more to do with that person then it has to do with them. Why defend yourself when you know you've done nothing wrong? That's what she needs to leave behind. She's so focused on this new beginning. She's so focused on this is my divine partner. This is my divine destiny. This is who I'm supposed to be with. Yada, yada, yada. That she is slowing her progress down, which is pretty tragic in my opinion. Let's see. So we've got Six of Pentacles, Queen of Swords in reverse, and the Wheel of Fortune in reverse. Oh, there we have it. That's the partner, King of Wands. <sighs> oh my goodness. So this King of Wands that she's interested in is upset. Upset. Because there's no communication. Upset because there's no future with this Queen of Wands. Because she's not giving to them anymore. So they are detaching. 
but they're calling, they may be telling her or in some way implying that she's being cruel, that she's being unfair, maybe even some sadistic energy in there. With the wheel in reverse, they might even claim it was bad luck to meet her, that she slowed down their progress in life. This is what she's trying to defend herself from. Clarify Six of Pentacles. Five of Pentacles in reverse. Clarify Queen of Swords. Oh, Lord. Oh, that's a lot of cards. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's do this. Nine of Pentacles. This is the King of Wands in reverse. Six of Pentacles upright, Ten of Cups, the Fool card in reverse, Three of Pentacles in reverse, and the Page of Wands. Clarify the Wheel of Fortune in reverse. We've got the High Priestess in reverse, the Knight of Cups upright, and the Ace of Wands. With the Eight of Swords in reverse. Mm -hmm. so ironically this is who she's freeing herself from remember we said she's freeing herself from something that's like limiting beliefs it's making her feel she's not good enough and guess who shows up with the eight of swords in reverse dun 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 <laughs> oh look at that look at what we've got underneath this king three of swords mm -hmm. so the Three of Swords in Reverse is this king doesn't want to feel heartache. They don't want to feel pain. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Nobody likes feeling that. But with the Six of Pentacles, I think when this king met this Queen of Wands, they didn't feel good enough themselves. She started giving energy to them. And then when she stopped, it put them back into the place of not feeling good about themselves. Because... It's interesting that they're coming up as a king of wands because I feel like they are also just now stepping into this confidence because they're still showing up in reverse over here. They're still stepping into this confidence, but it means that they still need a boost of her energy. Now, she is showing up with the nine of pentacles. King of wands in reverse, six of pentacles. Um... So if she is being made to feel like she's being cruel, like she's being inconsiderate, harsh, it's because she's freeing herself. She's being independent. Now, I don't think this person knows that she's struggling to do that. This person sees her as, you just took off. You don't even fucking care. You don't even give me energy anymore. But she does see them as a king of wands in reverse. So they see her as a queen of swords in reverse. She sees them as a king of wands in reverse. That's why she's trying to free herself. So why explain yourself to a king of wands in reverse? Because this person is telling her she's being cruel or implying she's being uh, like harsh. She's being too mean even. But she's doing it because King of Wands in reverse, she sees them as somebody who is selfish, egotistical, focused on themselves, not really having the courage to follow through. And they don't really say what they mean and mean what they say. So therefore, she's not going to give them energy. Even if, Ten of Cups, she did feel a lot of emotional fulfillment with this person, with the full card in reverse, they're not taking a leap of faith towards her because they're acting like you're not what I want. I like receiving your energy, but I wouldn't build with you. I just, you know, it's fun. Page of Wands. It's fun being with you. So this is actually not inaccurate in the sense that maybe this person feels she's being too harsh. And for them, from their perspective, she is. Because they're like, I don't understand why we can't just give each other energy. Six of Pentacles, Pentacles coming up twice. But in her mind, she sees this person as selfish 
and she's not entirely wrong. Because there's almost this energy of leading her on. I'm saying that because we have the Knight of Cups here. Somebody who's very persuasive at building an illusion, building emotional bonds, building a fantasy, but nothing will come from it. They're not going to take a leap of faith. They're not building with her. And she's, for so long with the uh, High Priestess in reverse, she's ignored her intuition. Because she kept seeing the potential. This is the third ace I've seen so far. Actually, the fourth, because the Ace of Swords came out. So, potential doesn't mean anything, though. Not if we don't follow through. And in this case, I don't think this king is going to follow through. So, potential or not, she knows it is better. So then why defend herself when she knows that she's not doing it out of cruelty? This person might feel that, but she knows she's not being cruel. Why defend herself then? Just let them think what they want. But I would say that the answer is because she still cares about what they think. She still cares that they don't feel abandoned, that they don't feel misunderstood, unloved, but can't have it both ways. Oh, I love this Queen of Pentacles upright. Yes. Okay, well, <laughs> the Emperor in reverse. We're still working on it. We're still working on it. Clarify Queen of Pentacles upright. The Six of Cups in reverse. With the Two of Swords in reverse. King of Pentacles upright. Five of Pentacles upright. And Chariot card in reverse. Okay, I love this because with the Queen of Pentacles upright, it means that she's recognizing what she needs to do. She's recognizing, first of all, I love this outfit. Look at how gorgeous that is. I want this dress. <laughs> like, give me. Um, she's recognizing that she needs to nurture herself. Six of Cups in reverse. She has a lot of probably repressed um, feelings and emotions from her childhood that she needs to address. Two of Swords, she's no longer in denial about it. She's no longer pretending that's not what's wrong. Um, the King of Pentacles here, what she does want is somebody who's on the same level as her. Somebody who's just as commitment-oriented. Because if you notice, the person so far that showed up is King of Wands with the Queen of Wands, which means there was passion, but there wasn't commitment. And now that's what she wants. But she understands also that she probably needs to keep integrating her masculine energy before that happens. Otherwise, she'll keep feeling um, sorrow, regret, disappointment because she hasn't done the work. This is also emperor energy. It's the chariot. If she doesn't put in the work, if she doesn't integrate the masculine energy, she's going to keep feeling this even if she does meet people who are commitment oriented. So I love this because it shows that she is understanding what's what what's needed what's the next step princess of wands which is the page of wands and justice yes okay so <clears throat> there is some how to put this there is an understanding that one of the reasons she was so drawn, so curious about this King of Wands is because there was some sort of justice, some sort of karmic lesson that she needed to learn. Clarify Princess of Wands. Eight of Cups. And Seven of Swords. And I think, remember the Two of Swords is in re reverse with this queen, right? So I think for some time she was in denial with the Seven of Swords, she was lying to herself, saying, no, 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 it was not karmic. That was my my soulmate. That was the love of my life, yada, yada, yada. And now she's realizing, no, no, it wasn't. Because the love of my life wouldn't treat me that way. Eight of Cups. She has to leave this behind. She has to stop being curious and excited about connecting with that person. She has to let it go because it is a karmic lesson. It's meant to teach her something. And the faster she learns that lesson, the more progress she'll make.
<laughs> nine of wands woof look at the muscles bitch talk about talk about boundaries like i mean this is boundaries on crack he's all like look look at me wrong look at me wrong i will beat you over the fucking <laughs> that's the energy he's giving four of cups okay so <laughs> so she's having to learn boundaries um because it feels like whatever this lesson was, it has a lot to do with boundaries. Because I think with the Four of Cups, she got to the point where she felt like, I'm, I'm missing opportunities. I'm, I'm so focused on other things that I'm, I'm overlooking true blessings and gifts that are coming in from the divine. So she's having to be like, look, I've got to block that out. I've got to block that out because it's distracting me. Clarify Nine of Wands. Four of Pentacles in reverse, yep. Six of Cups in reverse. Recognizing that this is not her soulmate. <clears throat> and she's got to let it go. Like Elsa from Frozen. Let it go. <laughs> because ultimately, <clears throat> Four of Cups, if she, keeps, if she keeps dealing with this illusion, because that's all it is. It's just the potential. It's like, this could happen, but it won't. But it could, but it won't. But it might. <laughs> if she keeps fucking with that, she's going to keep missing a lot of blessings because she's distracted. Remember, the path is just as important as the destination. Let's see. So we've got the Five of Wands in reverse, the Strength card, and the Devil in reverse. Oh my goodness. But the hanged man in reverse. So. <sighs> Five of Wands in reverse. This feels more like an internal battle that she's having to tame within herself. An internal battle that I think part of her wants to stay connected to this person part of her wants to fight for that connection and the part that's connected to divinity is like no 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 i need to release this this is toxic for me this is not conducive to my growth i don't want to be stuck here so i have to release it because this feels like um you know how most of you have played video games at some point in your life, right? Not, not. I'm not a big game player, but I do know the concept of most. Is like, imagine that there's point A and destination. But from point A to Z, there's all these little side quests, right? Now, <clears throat> she's currently dealing with a side quest. And in that side quest, it's teaching her something... <sighs> This sounds harsh, but I'm going to say it the best way I understand, okay? The energy that's coming through. It's like, imagine she's learning how to be some sort of leader, some sort of, um, yeah, leader is what comes to mind. A leader sometimes has to make <clears throat> decisions that seem a little ruthless. And what I mean by that is, <clears throat> imagine that on this quest, on this side quest, there's a group and the leader who's, you know, sinking into their um in their leadership role seeking into those qualities comes across this bog right and in that bog some of the members get stuck in quicksand but they're being chased <laughs> and i'm like i'm making this way bigger but i just have to explain what i'm feeling um and the leader has to decide whether they go back and save those people and have to fight whoever's chasing them, even though their their resources are low, or they have to keep moving and leave those people behind. Because those people got stuck, to top it all off, those people got stuck because they were trying to pull gold out of certain um, places. So it's kind of like they got themselves stuck, but should the whole team pay for these people getting stuck? No, not really. And I feel like this queen is learning that lesson. That's that's masculine energy, having to be a little ruthless 
taking decisions with your head, not always with your heart, because if you always think with your heart, that can lead you down the wrong path. So somebody like that, that's a leader, I'm not saying they should disconnect from their heart, no. But I'm saying if you're always focused on your heart, you could make a lot of people lose. And this is about mastering those emotions, mastering the desire to comfort, to, to give when it's actually detrimental to her to do so. It's basically her having to choose between her inner child and somebody else's inner child. If it's going to work against her to give to somebody else, then she has to choose her inner child first. Let's clarify five of wands. I know that was a long ass analogy, but <laughs> that's okay. It's mine. So I got to say it. Ace of swords upright. Clarify strength card. Clarify the strength card. Four of Wands upright, clarify the devil in reverse. Death card in reverse, five of pentacles in reverse, empress in reverse. Ten of pentacles, see? Like I said. <sighs> Ten of pentacles. She's got to decide what she's trying to build, okay? So when I say that, Let's let's go back to the analogy of the of the game, right? So if the analogy of the game is building leadership qualities and they don't have enough resources, so it's meant that specific level is meant to sharpen the person's wit, it's meant to sharpen their ability to discern, um, to make good judgment calls. And this person always does that thing where they come back and they fight with their group to save people. You know, they're probably going to lose a lot of points. They're probably going to lose a lot of people along the way. There's going to be a lot of deaths, a lot of resources lost because they're thinking with their heart and not with their mind. And in that particular game, because in other games, that would serve them. But in this particular game, that does not serve them. So Ten of Pentacles is like, what is it that you're trying to build? Does this align with what you're trying to build? Ace of Swords with the Five of Wands in reverse. She finally has clarity on that. Because remember, we started with the Ace of Swords in reverse, and now it's upright. It finally clicked. Oh, I see. Okay. So I need to stop. I need to stop battling myself because a piece of me wants to run after them, a piece of me doesn't. I have to be... Myself has to be in harmony with me. Me, myself, and I have to be in harmony. Four of Wands. She needs to have stability. She needs to work on her emotions being stable, her mind being stable. Again, her mind and her heart being in harmony, not, not embattled with each other. And the devil in reverse. So how do you beat a devil? How do you, how do you free yourself from these chains? Well, you transform. That's how. You step into your final form. <laughs> no, you change, truly. What is it you change? The Five of Pentacles is the piece of you that tells you that these chains are unbreakable. Five of Pentacles is the one that tells you you can't free yourself from this. This is too strong. Who do you think you are? The Five of Pentacles upright with the Death card upright with the Empress upright says, uh, bitch, I can free myself from anything because I'm the motherfucking Empress. Nothing holds me. Nothing chains me. Nothing binds me. I am protected. I am divinely guided. No chain can protect, can hold me down. No chain can bind me. So she's got to work on this transformation. She's got to release this feeling of not being good enough. And she's got to step into her empress role because right now they're all in reverse. She's struggling with that. Now it's the beginning because the devil's already in reverse. So it's already begun. This internal purging and cleansing has already begun, but it's not complete. All right. 
So I'm going to end part one here. For those of you who have already paid for the subscription, I will see you on the other side. For those of you who do not have the subscription, I hope you get it soon so that you don't miss out on part twos and threes, okay? See you there. Bye-bye.